I need to clean my glasses cause they've got finger marks I'm not going to be able to see That's better Hi booktube, it's Marianne at We Last Way Book and today we are doing the mid-year book breakout tag thing that I forgot to check the name of before I started so it's not technically the middle of the year because I checked it in the middle of the year technically the 2nd of July and I'm super anally retentive but everybody else is sharing theirs the now and I'm sharing mine the now because I'm gonna hop in that bandwagon while it's still running so how is it the middle of the year I know it's not exactly the middle of the year right but it's June we're halfway through the 12th month it has went a lot faster than fucking 2020 went but I don't think any year in the history of time and in the future of time is ever going to drag the same way that 2020 did. But I digress. So, the reason I'm here, the reason I'm present, the reason I'm in front of this camera at this current moment time, at this hour, in this location, right now, is to do the tag. Okay, <laughs> question number one is what is the best book you've read so far in 2021? It's simply uncategorically 100% has to be Neon Gods by Katie Robert. I love this book so much. This is the Hades and Persephone retelling that I needed. Hades was the hero I needed, Persephone was the bad bitch that I needed and a heroine. Everything about this book was absolutely perfect and it's not even just the romance, the actual plot itself, the setting, the writing, the side characters, the character development, like everything had substance. I need to clean my glasses because they've got finger marks. I'm not going to be able to see. That's better. Like this was really fucking good. And I've already pre-ordered the next book in the series. This was a five star read. Full stop, hands down. I cannot think of any actually negative reviews for this book. Unless I missed them, I don't know. But straight up, this this is the best book I've read so far this year, and I've got so excited about it. Anytime anybody's asked me about it, anytime I've spoke about it, whatever, I keep reading it because I love it so much. So yeah, Neon Gods by Katie Robert. What is the best sequel you've read so far in 2021? It, I'm swithering between two in this one. So the first one that came into my mind instantly was Actual Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert, which is the third book in the Brown Sister series. This was wholesome as fuck. It was an enemies to lovers, grumpy sunshine, um, forced proximity romance, workplace romance with ASD rep. It... 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Loved it. Five stars. Super spicy. And it was genuinely funny. In fact, see for the whole of the Brown Sister series, when things are labelled as a romantic comedy, I have a tendency to go, yeah, okay. And I don't actually find it funny. But Talia Hibbert knows how to do the balance between comedy and romance and spice and everything is so perfect. Again, like I was saying with Neon Gods, there's nothing lacking whatsoever in actually G. Brown. It's perfection personified in a book. Um, and also, uh, Waiting for a Scot Like You by Eva Lee, which was the third book in the Union of the Rakes series, came out this year. Absolutely loved that. Historical romance, forced proximity, hate to love, um, opposites attract. Again, perfect balance of plot and spice and character and everything. So that was a five star as well. So. I feel like that has to be an honourable mention because I absolutely loved it. A new release you haven't read yet. So I have The Helen's Waltz by Olivia Waite which is a female female historical romance uh, which I believe is I Hate to Love and I also have Hang the Moon by Alexandria Belfleur to read but I don't actually know what the synopsis for this book is. I just read Written on the Stars and loved it so much that I pre-ordered the next book without checking what it even was about. Hello. We're editing. So, since filming that, I decided to go and look up the synopsis for this book. And... I'm so excited. So, I knew the book was going to be about Brendan, who is 
Darcy's brother that worked with Elle on the astrology app thingy. And like, <laughs> so it's Darcy's best friend that he's fallen in love with into Charmer. He's like recreating iconic like movie dates. I love that so much. Oh my god. I'm ready to scrap my whole TBR and go and read it right now. So yeah, I haven't read those yet, but they're definitely on the list for July. What are your most anticipated new releases for the rest of the year? Well, I can say without any doubt in my mind it is The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. I think it's August it comes out? I'm not sure. I also have pre-ordered A Lot Like Adios, which is the sequel to You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Staria. I am so excited for this coming out as well because I absolutely loved You Had Me at Ola, so keep it coming 2021 20, what is your biggest disappointment did i read credence this year or last year oh no that was last year um i genuinely have no clue i mean logic would state that anybody doing this tag would go and look at their goodreads or wherever they track their reading and just double check but instead I wrote that question down and wrote next to it Credence by Penelope Douglas and I haven't even read that this year I read that last year uh, so pass oh no actually I do I do know what it was and it was that book that I read the thriller The Wives by Taryn Fisher I hated that book I felt so scammed and it wasn't even one of those ones where you're losing interest like on the way through it so you're like I'm just gonna DNF this like right up to the last minute and then they threw in a mental health trope twist thing that I hate being used in thrillers Um, I was not happy I remember being really pissed about it when I read it and I'm really pissed again thinking about it I fucking hated that book so much what is your biggest surprise of the year so far there's a couple actually so The Sweetest Oblivion by Daniel Laurie I hate mafia romances I don't know how many times I have to say this and I hate alpha heroes but I really enjoyed that book the dynamic between Nico and Elena was great it's a mafia romance and it's a an arranged marriage that goes wrong and then the these characters end up getting married and it's a whole thing and it is so good like so good it is so smutty tens across the board again another surprise uh was trust six venom by penelope douglas for the same sort of reasons and it's because i hate bully romances so much with a passion and i really enjoyed trust six venom i think i gave it five stars or four and a half this was a sapphic bully romance uh set in a high school so i was instantly thinking i'm not gonna like this and then i thought maybe it's gonna be fine because it's female female and i don't know if this is like sexist in some way or like if it's problematic in some context but I think it might have been because it was two female characters and I'm not saying that it's okay for two women to be abusive towards each other or to bully each other because I am a woman, I have been bullied by other women. Hello, it's me again. Uh, for some context to the statement, what I was trying to say was the power dynamic between two men and the power dynamic between two women aren't the same as a power dynamic between a male and a female even though one of the females could be stronger than the other, one of the males could be stronger than the other, like there's not that sort of default power dynamic difference. I hope this makes sense because th I'm worried that it's coming off really shitty, but it's hard to explain. Um, I have experienced it and also, so yeah. Um, and again another one that I thought was just going to be kind of your basic Billy Romance story and it turns out that it had a great plot um, it turns out that they had great side characters there was character development and the main characters themselves the main one of the main characters was so interesting and so three dimensional like you thought that she was this complete I really used I nearly used a really bad word there see you next Tuesday um and 
it turns out that she actually had loads of really complex sort of ways of thinking and things that had happened to her and interests and hobbies that she had that made me go actually wait a second you're not that bad so they were true surprises wasn't expecting to like them as much as I did so yeah who is your favourite new author and this could be debut author or new to you and I would have to say I don't know like there's been loads of authors that I've read that I've not read before um, that I just started reading this year one of them being uh, Eva Lee who wrote the Union at the Weeks series that I was discussing previously absolutely adore um, and also Brittany C. Cherry I hadn't read before until February there and honestly she writes such emotional stories and makes me feel every emotion under the sun and like see if I need to cry that's where I need to go like so heartwarming so emotional so sad like it has everything in it I'm not gonna lie it has everything in it and also Talia Hubbard as well but since you've already heard me proclaim my love and adoration for the Brown Sister series that was probably already self-evident. Who is your newest fictional crush? So I have lots of new fictional crushes but the most recent one that I can think of that's made me go I would marry you in real life would have to be Hades from Neon Gods. Uh, not the Wicked Villains Hades but the Neon Gods Hades. I forgot the name of the series that starting from there anyway okay so this guy is the king of consent everything that happens between him and Persephone regardless of whether it's sexual or not he constantly checks in with her to make sure that she's happy with the situation if she shows any sign if she shows any sign that she's not comfortable with a situation or she wants the situation to stop he will stop also like the way that he's described in the book I don't know if it's just me it might just be me right but for some reason like I was picturing kind of like if Keanu Reeves had a baby with um what's his face oh we got his name bollocks I'll include the name if it comes back to me but a cross between but like a mixture of Keanu Reeves and the guy whose name has completely escaped me. But yeah, that was that was the, the vibe that I was kind of visualising. I don't know if it's just me. I need to clean my glasses again because I can't fucking see. Sick of this. Okay, who is your newest favourite character? Um... I, do you know, I actually don't think I can answer this one without sitting and thinking about it for an extended period of time because there's been loads of characters that I've came across like over the past six months that I have just fell in love with. Funny story, as I'm sitting here editing this you will not believe the amount of footage I've just had to delete of me trying to answer this question and it's literally just me sitting staring off into the distance at nothing trying to come up with an answer to this question <sighs> I look like a fool I don't actually think I can answer this question because I can't think of a favourite uh, pass <sighs> book that's made me cry so I'm quite like notorious for crying at near enough every single book I read so this is I'm going to have to dig really deep for this um, I think the book that made me cry the most this year for like an extended period of time was probably when I read Love and Mr. Daniels um, back in February by Brittany C. Cherry and it was just the stories about this girl that falls in love with her teacher but it's like a kind of Aria Ezra situation where they meet each other out with school but then find out that that's a teacher student thing it's not like a massive age gap or anything like that there's only three years between the two of them um but uh the story 
as the stories unfold in between their relationship, she has these letters that her sister, who is now dead, um, has left her, and it's essentially like a bucket list type thing. And she's opening the notes, and the notes are there, and I feel myself tearing up thinking about it, so I'm going to stop talking about it. It's just so emotional. Um, I'm feeling too many feelings. So that was definitely like a massive tearjerker for me. 100%. What is the most beautiful book you have bought so far or have been gifted? See, my issue here is like, I can't think and my bookshelves are in the other room. Why did I not properly vet these? before I actually like started filming. I can't even remember the title of the tag. Uh, right, so I'm sitting in my head going through cataloging the books that I have been gifted this year and there's like nothing jumping out at me. So do you know what I'm gonna do? What I'm gonna do is I am gonna go and film the rest of this and then I'm going to come back and edit in the cover or covers if there's more than one that I think oh my god you're the most beautiful book cover I bought this year um and I'll just like stick them here oh the dreaded question which books what books do you have to read by the end of the year other than the pre-orders that I've got so I don't have the list of pre-orders here either fucking Egypt um, there's series that I want to finish. I would like to finish the um, Wicked Quill series by Eva Lee. I would like to finish the Broken Earth trilogy by N.K. Jemison. I still need to finish the Ice Planet Barbarian series. I'm going through them kind of slow though. I need to finish rereading the Bridgerton series and I can't think what else. Oh yeah, and I was working through Britney C. Cherry's backlist. So I need to get on that. I also need to finish the Wicked Villain series. And I'm working my way through Katie Roberts' backlist as well. None of them are immediate. They are not urgent. But I would like to get them done by the end of the year. It's probably not going to happen if I'm being 100% honest and true to myself. But I will try. So those are the three questions that make up the tag. Um, I'll put the questions in the description box along with any other important links and also all of my social medias where you can come and follow me, be my friend, we can talk about books, it'll be fun. So enjoy the rest of your evening or morning or afternoon because I don't know what time it is where you are right now. So we'll just say enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe. Happy reading and I'll speak to you later. Bye!